AB has been there. AB, he'll go to the thick of things. Uh, I love it. I love, uh, you know, people like that. Um, basically, that day started off real interesting. Um, I wasn't going to go to the protest. I wasn't going to be involved in it at all. Um, I did want to go down there and see what the turnout was. Um, so when I got down there, uh, I talked to AB and I talked to a couple other people. Uh, and we were like, man, there's not a lot of adults here. There was a lot of kids that were partying and they were just kind of having fun because they, they were just out there, you know what I mean? And it wasn't really about the matter at hand as much as it was in them having something to do. You know, with COVID, with everybody being locked up, it was a, it was a time, oh, we can get out the house now type of deal. So my, and my first thing was to go make sure our youth was okay, like make sure everything was, we, I mean, to help, you know what I mean? To make sure that there wasn't no violence going on, to make sure there wasn't nobody beating on nobody, to make sure they didn't get off topic, you know what I mean? And we kind of got to talking and we didn't see enough leaders. We didn't see nobody there. So you had a whole bunch of kids up there talking and you had a whole bunch of kids up there, but they didn't have the knowledge that they needed or, you know what I mean, to actually know what they're marching for. And so it was kind of like a bunch of kids on an ill mission out there. And that's what it started out as. Um, so a couple of older cats did get on the microphone. Um, I did take on the microphone and I did talk to the kids uh, for a brief second and explain to them how that Lansing police as a whole, like uh, Chief Green and those guys, they're not that bad. We don't deal with a lot. I know we see uh, a lot of stuff about the numbers and how many blacks get pulled over and stuff. Well, they patrol a predominantly black area, so it's going to be like that. Um, I think that we have more problems with the police as far as like once we drive to the outskirts or once we get out of Lansing city limits, that's where a lot of people have had most of their issues with. So back to the protest, um, I basically explained that to them. I explained to them where we have police brutality issues at. I explained to them where that, you know, the cases, like the East Lansing had a couple cases that was going on currently while we were actually down there on the steps. East Lansing was fighting, um, you know, uh, Tito, the guy that got beat up for the unruly arrest or whatever. So I said, if you guys are going to march or something, just have a reason to march. And I explained to him that this was not a one day fight. This was not just going to be something that we could go march and tear up everything. And then, you know, it's over. It's more to that than this. And um, that's kind of where I like took. I learned a lot from that day because I said, it's enough people marching in pro. Where are the people that's actually fighting, you know what I mean? To get into those rooms, to get into those tables, you know what I mean? And to be able to change instead of going and doing it. Um, I, I feel very, like, I don't know. I just think that we've tried, we've tried the protest and the tearing up stuff so much already. And we, we've seen over the years what that's got. And so I think that we need to learn from our, I think we had to learn from our mistakes and learn from what didn't work in the past. So that was my message to them. So as the day continued, they ended up marching down Michigan. Um, we got, uh, they got to East Lansing. Um, like I said, I wasn't really into it. I was just following behind them, making sure there was a police buggy, not even two lanes behind me. They were behind me following the crowd. It about. 2,500 people. They were following them all the way down Michigan. Um, it was a really beautiful sight, man. All the way down to all the way to East Lansing. It was a it was a beautiful thing. Michigan was covered when you couldn't get through. The the city, the love that we got from the city, the people that were actually driving, the drivers and the people that were they were supporting. They were getting out their cars, putting their hand. They understood the they understood the purpose and the need for what we were doing that day. We had so many people jump in, like jump in. I'm talking about white, black, Chinese that were just jumping in and coming to walk. And then, um, like I said, so I followed behind, I made sure, and it was a lovely thing. Nothing was, nothing on the way to East Lansing, going down Michigan, um, eastbound, no problem. It was just marching. It was, they were saying uh, George Floyd's name. They were saying Breonna Taylor's name no peace, no justice, you know what I mean? It was just a, it was a peaceful protest. And, you know, we got to East Lansing um, 
and we got a, we got we got a little stuck like we got a little it was like they uh, i don't know if the devil came out you know what i mean it was like no y'all gotta stop right here type of deal when in reality what they were just trying to do is march and make a turn and um they wouldn't let them march and make a turn so back to ab ab he talked he said he talked to the captain um i talked to the captain and they ended up letting us go through but before i go on for that i like to say this if you drive out to East Lansing right now, I guarantee you there's 12 cars in that parking lot. But they knew that we were coming and it was only one buggy left in that parking lot. There was one buggy left in that park, one police cruiser in that parking lot. So it was like they kind of left the kids something to, to tear up, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying that that made it right to tear up that police car or nothing, but I've just seen so many times to where there's 24 and 30 police cars out there at a the time. And this one day, there was only one police car on a Sunday, which was just kind of, you know, but back to the story, AB uh, did a wonderful job at coordinating uh, a few cats, Jalil Candy, shout out Jalil Candy, Eric's football coach. Um, he had a little team with him that helped us uh, control traffic and we got the kids to turn around on Michigan. Um, and it doesn't get talked about enough, but the Target building um, down in East Lansing was this close to being to being tore apart and rambled and rumbled like you've seen in so many other cities. But the good people that were with us, they stopped that. Like we stopped that. We said, this is not what this is about. We were just trying to just her. We weren't trying to tear up anything. We were trying to get we stopped them from going in the Target. Shout out AB, shout out Jalil, shout out everybody that helped us that day. And we started marching back down Michigan. Um, and that's sort of when the chaos started to happen. Um, we got back down Michigan to Sparrow. Um, once we passed Sparrow and got to the light, uh, we took a stop at the stoplight. Like we were stopping light traffic and we stopped. People were getting out their cars and people were saying they salute us and all these things. But we had two unruly people, one green truck that ran over, you know, a couple people. I, it, it's fine. He wanted to get in his driveway. You know, I kind of get it, but I, I just I just wish he would have handled it a better way. But once that happened, that began to get the crowd irky and jerky. We had a guy on a bike using the N-word profoundly over and over again, calling everybody whites, blacks, whoever he could, the N-word. And... So we had to stop him. He almost got stomped out. We had to stop him from doing that. And then after uh, uh, after that, we basically get to the Lansing Center. Okay, so once we got to the Lansing Center, so uh, it was a, a female drive, a female. She was cool. She was talking to people in the protest. She knew people that were in the protest. She was saying, God, George Floyd, George Floyd, George Floyd. But when she got ready to go, it became an issue, she was ready to go. She started to shout out slurs, uh, using the N-word, which she probably used with her friends all the time, and that's what people don't get to think. That's what people don't, they don't get it. Like, when you allow people, when you allow people to keep on using the N-word and say the N-word all the time, and when you're frustrated and you don't want to hear it, it's one of them, and that's all, that's, that's what that was. That, that provoked that whole, that whole thing with her driving over and everything. And once she backed up and pulled off, then it was nothing else that really anybody could do but God, uh, because she had hit two people. And once that happened, it just turned into a mob. And I'm sure everybody's seen the news and what happened after that, you know, the car burning up and all that stuff. But as far as the, the protest in general to that point, it was a great, it was a beautiful thing. Um, now, as 